In early June of 1987, Marcus Bullen, a former deputy mayor of the Western Australian city of Fremantle, his wife Winifred, son Lance and daughter-in-law Joan were returning home from her holidays in the Northern Territory. They travelled west on the Victoria Highway and decided to stop for the night at the Wayside Inn and Caravan Park, located in the sparsely populated Kimberley region, some 518 kilometres southwest of the territory capital Darwin. On June 9, at 9am, Marcus and his son left their wives to locate a suitable spot to fish for the day and said they would return in an hour. However, the two never showed and after hours of waiting, Winifred and Joan alerted authorities who began searching the popular fishing spots in the area. The next day, the Bullens burnt out Sigma station wagon was discovered, but that wasn't all. Nearby searchers also found two shallow graves containing deceased persons later to be identified as Marcus Bullen, aged 70, and his son Lance, aged 40. Investigators from Darwin were quickly alerted, and during the remaining daylight hours, a large search was conducted of the area, both on ground and from above. Vehicle tracks, footwear impressions, and drag marks were identified. It was concluded that Marcus and Lance were ordered to lay on the ground on their stomachs. They were then executed, stripped and dragged to their graves. The offender had driven the Bullen's vehicle a short distance before setting it on fire, as well as removing its number plates. It was difficult for investigators to come up with any leads in these seemingly random killings in the middle of nowhere. On the 13th of June, Philip Walkermeyer, his fiancée Julie Watson, and friend Terry Bolt set up camp 110 kilometres southwest of the far northern Western Australian town of Kununurra at the Pentecost River Crossing picnic area. The trio were later joined by David McKenzie, a co-worker of Bolden Walkermeyer, at the Department of Aviation at Kununurra, as well as his friend Daniel Rowe. The group fished until shortly before midnight and had breakfast together before McKenzie and Rowe departed for the return trip to Kununurra. On the 15th of June, McKenzie went to work and found that Walkermeyer nor Bolt were present. He went looking for the pair, asking around town and checked their homes with no trace of his friends. He returned to the campsite and discovered Walkermeyer's burnt-out Toyota troop carrier in a gully surrounded by an area of burnt scrub. He quickly notified police, who found spots of blood where the group had camped. A search was conducted in the area, and at 4pm the naked body of Julie Watson was located lying face down on the edge of the river. On the 16th of June, Philip Walkermeyer's remains were located close to the campsite, and two hours later, Terry Bolt was also found on the bank of the river. Shoe impressions found at the crime scene were similar to those found at the Bullens' homicide. Five fired cartridge cases from a 223 caliber rifle were also discovered, as well as tire impressions. These clues helped investigators piece together a sequence of events at the scene of the murders, which included the killer had observed the victim from high ground, then approached through high grass, and began shooting approximately 100 metres from his targets. The bodies were stripped and rolled into the Pentecost River. Clothing and camping goods were placed into the victim's vehicle, which was driven a short distance from the campsite, and burnt. It became clear that the Pentecost River murders were linked to the Bullen murders, not only because of the almost identical circumstances, but because witnesses from both locations had mentioned seeing a white Toyota Hilux 4Runner utility with a fiberglass canopy on the back and Queensland registration plates, either shortly before or after the murders had taken place. Authorities established roadblocks throughout the Kimberley and Pilbara regions, as well as a tactical response group to search for the obviously violent offender. Knowing the vehicle, Police made inquiries nationally, including requests for lists of owners of Toyota 4Runners. A number of responses were received regarding hired Toyota 4Runners, including one from Brisbane, the capital city of the state of Queensland. The report stated that a German tourist by the name of Joseph Schraub had hired a Toyota 4Runner on the 22nd of April 1987. Schraub had not returned the vehicle and the description of Schwab was circulated through police information channels. A helicopter pilot from Camberland Station flew over what appeared to be the wanted Toyota 4Runner, 
and provided police with an important lead to the location of Schwab, who was considered to be the most wanted man in Australia at the time. The tactical response group advanced from the main highway, whilst a police aircraft surveyed the vehicle, which was located in a bush area near Fitzroy Crossing, not usually frequented by tourists. The aircraft was roughly 50 metres from the vehicle when a man emerged from the driver's side door and began firing at the aircraft with a 308 calibre Seiko bolt-action rifle. Sergeant Matson of the tactical response group announced his presence and called on the man to stop shooting in which the man immediately began firing at police on ground. Matson called on his team to engage the offender and in the first rounds fired, the Seiko rifle was shot out of the hands of the offender wounding him in his left hand. The man then picked up a 223 calibre Ruger and retreated. Police fired tear gas at and near the vehicle, starting a fire. The man ran off in the bush carrying the Ruger and as the police advanced, the suspect stopped and returned fire. This was a military tactic whereby an individual fires at the enemy to keep from advancing, then moves to a new position, repeating the activity until escape is accomplished. This occurred on several occasions until police pilots informed the tactical response group that the man had been hit and was likely deceased. The team approached the body of the suspect, who was lying face down, wearing only a pair of military-style camouflage trousers. There was a bullet wound to the middle back right side of his spine, which exited through his heart. At 3.40pm, Sergeant Matson reported to the Detective Chief Inspector that his team had engaged the offender in a firefight resulting in the death of the suspect, who was confirmed to be Joseph Thomas Schraub, a 26-year-old German tourist. Schraub grew up in Pocking, West Germany, and was described by people who knew him as polite and a shy individual. He was considered a loner, who had few friends. At the age of 15, he became a member of a rifle association. He was a dedicated shooter and took a great deal of interest in firearms. He had visited Australia in 1981, and worked as a cabinet maker in South Australia. During this time, he purchased rifles and enjoyed hunting wild pigs. In 1984, he returned to Germany and became a night watchman. He had convictions in West Germany for breaking and entering, as well as theft. He had returned to Australia in 1987 and purchased four firearms and 3,000 cartridges. Not much is known about his activities in the months leading up to the killings, other than that he travelled through Queensland and the Northern Territory. Investigators are unable to come up with a clear motive for the murders of Marcus and Lance Bullen, Julie Watson, Philip Walkermeyer and Terry Bolt, but it was possibly something Schwab had fantasised about for a long time, and it was almost certain that if police did not intervene, Schwab would have killed again.